Good evening, friends. Welcome. Welcome to this Christmas concert at Deer Lake United Church. My name is Joseph, and I am the minister of Deer Lake, a faith community located on the ancestral, traditional, and unseated lands of the Halcomnium and the Squamish-speaking peoples. This evening, it is a pleasure to invite you to this time together where we will hopefully be able to sit back, relax, and enjoy. The pieces that are going to be performed for you are all pre-recorded and have occurred in years past at Deer Lake. You'll see some familiar faces, I'm sure, and perhaps remind you of other faces. We are a diverse community and it is a joy to bring our gifts and our talents to you this night. As you listen to the music and the, the nativity pageant that is about to be shared, may your hearts be warmed this night. May your spirits be comforted. Uh, may you grow in your excitement and eagerness for that holy day that is approaching. And as you listen to the music, may you remember and truly know that God is with us, that Emmanuel, God with us, the Christ child, shall be born once more. And so, friends, without further ado, I present to you Christmas at Deer Lake United Church.
Mary and Joseph lived in a small town called Nazareth. They were planning to marry each other late one night when she was all by herself. Mary felt there was someone with her. She couldn't see anyone. Are you an angel? Mary asked in a tiny voice. Mary had never seen an angel, but somehow she was sure it must be an angel. Then someone spoke to her. Be happy, Mary. God has chosen you for a wonderful thing. You are going to have a very special baby. You must call this baby Jesus because he will be the ch God's chosen one, God's Messiah. But how can that be? I'm not married. God will make this happen in a way that you will find hard to understand. Mary was afraid for herself. In those days, people got angry when women had babies before they were married. When, when Joseph heard about this, he was very worried. How can Mary have a baby when we aren't married yet? He wondered. Then one night, Joseph had a dream. He dreamed that an angel was telling him, Don't worry, Joseph. It's all right. You and Mary go ahead and get married, just as you planned. So Mary and Joseph got married, and they loved each other very much together. They planned and worked and to make a loving home for their special baby. Mary could feel the baby going inside her. It won't be long now, she said to Joseph, her husband. Then one day, Joseph came with some bad news. We have to go to Bethlehem. There are orders from the Roman emperor. Everybody has to go to the town that their grandparents came from. The emperor wants to count how many men he can get to fight in his army. But, but the baby is almost ready to be born. It's hard for me to walk very far. Do I have to go too? That's what the emperor ordered. He wants to count all the people because we are part of the family of King David. We have to go to Bethlehem. Bethlehem is King David's city. It doesn't make any sense, but we have to go. Mary and Joseph were very tired. When they reached Bethlehem, they needed to rest for a while, but they couldn't find a place to stay. They tried to get a room in an inn, but all rooms were taken. Finally, someone else said, you can stay where they keep the cows and donkeys. It was not a nice place. It was smelly and dirty and cold. But it was the only place Mary and Joseph could find. Joseph felt very, very angry. A baby should not be born in a place like this. That night, in, a sm in that smelly stable, Mary and Joseph, Mary's baby was born. It was, it hurt when the baby came out of Mary. She cried. Joseph cried too. He cried, his, he tried his best to help. Joseph rubbed the new baby dry. And he, and then he wrapped the baby Jesus in some clothes. Mary and had brought Joseph and Mary made a soft bed in, a sh in sh the straw. And all three of them laid down to rest. The angel said this was going to be a very special baby. It doesn't seem very special to be born in a place like this. Both of them smiled at tiny red-faced baby with eyes so tight closed so tightly closed. Joseph laughed when the baby closed his tiny hand over Joseph's finger. Mary and Joseph cried together too. Jesus was so tiny and the world seemed such a cruel place. Then Mary and Joseph said, Thank you to God for a gift of the beautiful child. Now let's try to get some sleep. Mary and Joseph and the baby were sound asleep. 
They woke up when they heard voices outside. Who is it? The night was very dark and he was afraid someone might want to hurt them. It's all right, said a kind voice. We are shepherds. We've come to see the baby. Who told you that there was a baby here? Now he was really worried. One of the shepherds came inside. I think it was an angel, said the shepherd. The other, then all the other shepherds came inside too. There was a bright light in the sky, said another shepherd, and music, beautiful music. First, the angel told us not to be afraid, but we were scared anyway. None of us had had ever seen an angel before. Then the angel told us some good news. The angel said a savior, savior had been born, a person who would show us what God is like. An angel said we could find the baby in a place where they fed cows and donkeys. It didn't seem like much of a place to have a baby, especially a baby that's going to be the savior of the whole world. It's not a nice place for any baby to be born. What else did the angel say? Nothing. Suddenly, the whole sky was full of music. There was, there was singing everywhere. The words of the song were something like glory to God and peace to all people everywhere. Then, then just as suddenly, the angels were gone. The, sh the shepherds came a little closer. They wanted to a good look at Jesus. He looked like an ordinary baby to me, said one of the shepherds. He is an ordinary baby, but he is also special. He is very special. On the way back to the sheep, to the sheep, the shepherds told everybody what they had seen and heard. Sometimes Jesus was born Sometime after Jesus was born, some ma magi came to visit him. Magi are sometimes called the wise ones or the star washers. The magi were not Jewish like Mary and Joseph and Jesus. And they came from a country far away. They said, we, we have, have been, been looking, looking for at, at, the at the stars. We think, think we the stars, stars tell us the ruler has been born to the Jewish people. 
Where will he find his child? Herod was the king of Jewish people. He was a very bad person. He was afraid that someone might try to be king instead of him. So when Herod heard what the Magi were looking for, he was afraid. Herod had a meeting with the people who helped him. What did the prophet say that the Messiah, God's chosen one, is going to be born? Herod's helper looked in all the old books and said, In Bethlehem, that's what's written in the book. So Herod talked to the Magi. This new ruler of the Jews is supposed to be born in Bethlehem. Why don't you go find this child? Then come back and tell me so I can bring him some gifts too. Herod was lying. Herod wanted to get rid of the baby so he couldn't grow up to be a king. The Magi went to Bethlehem. They saw a very bright star in the sky. That, that is, that star is leading us. Look, it has been, uh, it has stopped moving. That must be the place where we would find the Messiah. That's how the Magi found Jesus. They gave Jesus very nice gifts. There was a shining gold. There was sweet smelling incense and a perfume called Murph. That night, one of the Magi's had a dream. Don't go back to Harold, said Harold. Harold wants to kill the new baby. So the Magi went back to their home by another way. Joseph had a, a dream, and the dreams Joseph was told Run away, take Mary and Joseph, Jesus, to Egypt. Herod wants to kill Jesus. Wake up, Mary. We have to run. We have to run to Egypt. In the middle of the night, Mary and Joseph and their tiny baby started walking to Egypt. They became refugees. The people were without a home. It was many years before they could go back to Nazareth.
I don't know what you're feeling at home, but I pray that the Spirit is moving within you and around you, and that Christmas is seeming even more and more real, even though we're at a distance. As many of you know, I started in May of this year, and so I haven't had the honor and pleasure of hearing the choir sing in person. I haven't even met most of our kiddos that were in that pageant. And yet my heart is filled with gratitude on this night. It is filled with joy. Speaking of gratitude, there are so many people to thank that made this possible. So I'm going to start, I think chronologically is the order, and if I forget anyone, my deepest, deepest apologies. It's not intentional, um, just my forget for not, for forgetfulness at my age. Um, and no smart comments on that one. I'm old. So we'll begin first with the Christian Education Committee. Yes, this was uh, started with that committee's uh, talking and discussion, uh, talking about the nativity pageant and how to engage the kids once more this year. And thanks to Sharon and Gary who had the recording for this pageant uh, that was able to be shown this evening. Also, thank you to our worship committee who endorsed this idea and this plan and encouraged the planning of it and uh, supported its uh, presence and its existence behind the scenes. A special thank you goes to our music team, uh, to Donna, to Rebecca, and specifically to Terry, who took the lead on selecting the pieces. Thank you, Terry, for all the time you spent in and listening to all the old pieces, figuring out which ones would work, which ones wouldn't work, and putting them in the right order to, to make this night so special. And of course, to Donna and Rebecca for their, their help in the initial recordings of these pieces. And talking about the initial recordings, all all praise, always and forever, to, to Gary, who is our video editor, who is the one who recorded these choir pieces so long ago, and I think also the Christmas pageant as well. This event would not be possible without Gary. And so just many, many words of thanks. I know that the congregation is most uh, appreciative of everything you do and continue to do, including bring us worship every week too. Gary, don't go anywhere, please. And I do want to make a mention of Pam, who provided the images, our office administrative assistant. She uh, came up with the images, the slides that were shown this, this evening, and so special thank you to her. And of course, special thank you to our Dear Lake Choir, to many of you out there watching, I'm assuming. Uh, thank you so much for being willing to be recorded, but also just by offering your gifts your beautiful voices to this community. And thank you to the young ones who participated in that children's pageant a few years back. I think it was, I was told three years ago. Uh, thank you for your willingness of being photographed and recorded and, and being willing to share it. I know, especially for our young friends, it can be embarrassing looking on back on old photos and so forth. I, as adults, even experience that probably. Uh, or I do definitely experience that. Many of you might have experienced that in the choir if you noticed in the video old appearances and stuff. But thank you for getting past that embarrassment and being willing to share that moment in time because it means something on this night. It is a gift this season that we couldn't offer otherwise. And to all those who I am forgetting, because I know there are more, many more part of this community who made this event happen, Thank you. Sincerely, thank you. With that said, friends, uh, we are going to do a Zoom fellowship time afterwards as if we would have like the Northex area and we would have, you know, uh, hot chocolate and apple cider and some cookies and refreshments. You're invited to join on that Zoom. The, the link will be part of the What's Up email that was sent last week. You can click on that link and it will take you to the Zoom meeting afterwards. And you might just come by for a quick hello, stay a bit longer, pour yourself some cup of a uh, hot drink or keep you warm and toasty this night and chat a while. Uh, if there's enough of us, we will use the breakout rooms. So it will be a small group gathering and we'll do rotations and all that fun stuff. So friends, wherever you are this night, may you have experienced the love of God and a touch of the Christmas spirit. Until we meet again, 
may you always know that God is with us, loving us wherever we may be. Amen.